<laughs> Why is blue lemonade called blue lemonade? <laughs> <laughs> the thing we talk about off the air. <laughs> I just say, if you're gonna call blue lemonade, make a blueberry lemonade and just fucking beat beat something. You know, fucking blue. Well, uh, I sound like Boom Harris, man. It's going, it's going, it's going with blue. That's a different thing, then. That would be blueberry lemonade and not just blue lemonade. Well, it doesn't even fucking taste like lemonade anyway. Well, tastes like metallic blue. Go. Tastes like the spunk off of Beetleborg. Ooh. <laughs> Which one? The blue one. <laughs> Duh. I'm your host, as always, Chad Porto. Welcome to another edition of Making an Impact, brought to you by RealNerdCorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R-D-C-O-R-P.com. Uh, we are the website that is promoting a video of Great Muda selling noodles to Asia. <laughs> that was an entire yeah. story for one day. I like that I'm no longer doing those uh, week weeknight recaps of the news, because then I wouldn't have time to put it in a story of Great Muda selling noodles to, to Bollywood. Now I can. Yeah. <laughs> so, ha <laughs> ha. Suck it. Uh, if you are done sucking it and you want to follow me on Twitter, you can do so at Chad Nerdcorp, C H A D N E R D C O R P, and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut, C H A D S P H O T O H U T, and I did not do the WCW yet. Ah, god damn it. It's alright. That was very fast. <laughs> it was. Don't worry. Uh, the show will only be about an hour today, so I'll just do it afterwards. And I'm Chad Portal. And joining me, as always, is the cantankerous one himself. He mm. is the one who lives in a pineapple under the sea. He is the one that has a a rock with a starfish that lives underneath it as a neighbor. That is always mm. somehow too deep and not deep enough for him to sit in. Fuck At the shit. same time. It, it's fucking weird. Uh, <laughs> as well as the uh, aforementioned uh, neighbor, um, Squid Arcus. Mm. He is SpongeBob Zack Pants. SpongeBob yeah. Zack Pants. SpongeBob Zack Pants. SpongeBob Zack Pants. The show's over. So you can find Zachary Tyler Pew Pew, whatchamacallit, at SpongeBob Duncan. On his many outlets, and by many I mean three. His never used Twitter account, Dr. Scrapperty. Spelled it how it sounds. You can also find him on Instagram. He's been posting a lot of his uh, original drawings, including a robot, a dude uh, standing around, mm -hmm. somebody looking forlorn. Maybe there was a puppy. I'm not sure. I haven't looked through his Instagram account. There. Puppies, man. Puppies, man. You can also find him on DeviantArt. Uh, he posts the same stuff there. So you can go to his Instagram or DeviantArt at Radiance2020. That's R-A-D-I-A-N-C-E-2020. Indeed. And once again, we are making an impact. Your one-stop shop for all things impact. Wrestling news, notes, reviews, and shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Not evil shenanigans, by the way. No, evil no. shenanigans. Just cheeky and fun shenanigans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... The first thing we're talking about is, of course, last week's episode of Impact. It was called Cali Combat, and it was shot. Yeah. Are you done? <laughs> I am now. <laughs> and it was shot in the home. I think it was the Ocean View Center. Uh, it's the same place where the championship wrestling from Hollywood crew shoots their shows. Only Impact clearly brought a much bigger budget to the arena because <laughs> it looked phenomenal, even if there was only like 200 people there. Now, this is actually, you know, when, when this originally broke, you know, two, three weeks ago, everyone was all still like, oh, my God, yeah, this looks terrible. They couldn't even draw 200 people. Well, Zach, turns out there's a reason why they did this the exact way that they did this. Would you like to take a guess as to why they did this the way they, they actually did this? Mm, I could never hazard a guess to say. You couldn't show us the world. You are blind and kind of lazy. Tell me, Zachary, what will it take to get you to do any work? A pay raise. It's never happening. 
<laughs> for them to be a raise, I feel like there would have to be initial pay. Hey, hey, hey. We don't use child labor on this show. <laughs> oh, wait, that's not what I was being accused of. Never mind. Forget I said that. Don't look into it. <laughs> Uh, so Kali Combat is actually serving as a backdoor pilot for a secondary, technically a tertiary show, for Impact Wrestling that would serve oh. as a studio show, much like they did back in the days of the old Impact Zone. Mm. The idea would be to do it in Southern California, where there's a, a dearth of talent from not only AAA, because, you know, uh, Mexico City is, is somewhere on the other side of that border. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's southernly. Yes. I want to say it's it's uh, under California, but it might be under Texas. Or it might be under deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, I, I, I would say Texas, but I, I couldn't say for certain. There is an arena that AAA uses that is just south of California. That, that AAA? AAA. AAA. So it would make sense. You you could have your uh, your main impact guys go get some extra money. You could uh, bring in guys like uh, Reno Scum and whoever championship from uh, wrestling from Hollywood has on hand that week because they are a regional promotion, which means that you know if anyone of substance is, is going to come out of there, they are going to get signed. Guys like Adam Pierce, Willie Mack, um, yeah, nor are, are the greatest impact wrestler of all time, Nor Furnham. Oh, the Nor Furnham. I'm sure you've heard of him. Scorpio of Sky. Course. Uh, not championship wrestling, but local uh, California promotions like uh, PWG and others uh, had John Cena, Samoa Joe, Frankie Kazarian, Christopher Daniels. So there's a, a history of, of finding town in that region, uh, plus mm -hmm. easier access for uh, the AAA talent to work with Impact or for any other um, Hispanic promotion to work with Impact. And a lot of the Impact talents, or at least some of them, you know, specifically Ty Valkyrie, live in L.A., so it, it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for them to, to do this uh, pilot, and the idea is that if they do make that deal with Axis where Anthem would acquire Axis, which would be a big haul for, for Anthem, like that would be a good get, because uh, it would bring all their reach southern, across the border some, into the States, and it would up the reach of everything they have on Fight Network, as well as everything that Impact has going on with itself it just it makes sense for everyone involved plus you get some synergy with women wrestling in new japan so yes huzzah um huzzah, huzzah. so we start off this week though with a brawl to end it all it is michael elgin versus rhino <laughs> rhino uh, i know it, it actually was the uh one of the longer matches like there's a lot of long matches on this week's show Mm -hmm. uh, Elgin and Rhino went to a double countout to open up the match, but you know I will say this: I don't like Elgin as a human being. As yes. a wrestler, I think he's really good. I really do. I would agree. I really do. Uh, he had a really good match with Rhino, and the thing with Rhino is he's only forty-three. People often forget that Rhino is a young man. Rhino was like twenty or twenty-two when he won the uh, ECW Championship in two thousand and one. So, Ooh. yes. Like that, I, I think about that. He was actually, I think he was 24. Cause, wait, wait, hand. Uh, if he's 43 now, 45 is 24 when he won it. Math. <laughs> Makes him one of the youngest champions of all time, at least for a world title. So, I like the role he's in because he's being put over, but he's also helping put over other talent. Which is exactly what you want from a guy like Rhino. Um, yes. They're going to have a no disqualification match, I think, or a false count anywhere match in Mexico. Yeah I, yeah, I believe it's false count anywhere. You boys like Mexico? I don't know why I'm referencing a lot of Super Troopers this week, but there you go. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Uh, also, point of note uh, about Mexico, uh, Impact has started to pick up the hotel tabs. For old Ooh. traveling talents. Well, there you go. Now, they're trying to acquire access. They made seven-figure deals to Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. And they're now paying for hotels for talent. This does Ooh. not sound like a promotion that is in trouble. No, it does not. <laughs> just pointing that one out there. I am just pointing that one out there. So, uh, what do you think of the opener? Um, The opener was solid. Uh, I didn't... It lasted longer than I thought it did, or that I thought it would. Mm -hmm. 
uh, especially for it to end in a double countout. But yeah, Rhino Rhino versus Elgin is something that I could stand to see again. I don't know why Larry Zanaka doesn't like Reno Scum. Fuck him. I like you. I like you, Larry. I just think you have shit taste in wrestlers. So next up, we get the North versus Reno Schism. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, we have a little bit of bias. Uh, we, we reached out and got Adam Thornstone to do a show with us a couple months back. He's a cool dude. We like him. He's not afraid to talk shit. And one time, Vince McMahon was impressed with the suit that he chose to wear. Well, there you go. Yeah, Adam Thornstone. There you go. So they had a pretty good match. Uh, I think part of the mm -hmm. issue, though, is and and Larry Zonka doesn't mention this in his four one one Mania review. Uh, there's not much drama in a title change here, and I agree with that. Right. Reno Scum is not under full time deal. This was taped three weeks ago. We already knew that LAX had their final match against the North for the tag titles in Mexico. That was a big story. So kind of like meh. But here's the thing: when you look back at it, sometimes wrestling isn't just about the moment; it's about the history. They will mm -hmm. now be able to say that, you know, they beat Reno Scum several times in, in the span of a weekend. So, and, technically, because uh, this was shot alongside, um, uh, what were the other two? Uh, Hollywood Boulevard and Field of Dreams? <laughs> um, if you build it, they will wrestle. Starstruck? Yep, that was the one uh, in Hollywood. And then there was right. uh, the one... Uh, Unbreakable? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. So, Kali Combat, Starstruck, and Unbreakable were filmed back-to-back-to-back. To back to back. And in all three of those shows, I think... Uh, uh, no. Uh, Starstruck was not. Uh, they didn't wrestle um, Reno Scum at Starstruck. They wrestled mm. uh, Tommy Dreamer and Rob Van Dam at Starstruck. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. I believe you are correct. So, you know, this adds to the historical significance of the North's title reign. You know, it may not have been that impactful in the moment, but looking back, it adds something of substance. And will Josh Matthews stop saying that Reno Scum is former Global Force Wrestling Tag Team Champions? They're not. There's only been two. <laughs> the Bollywood Boys, Herv and Gerv, Herv and Gerv, who are now known as Samuel, Samuel Shamazel, Something something nozzle. I How's it Feff Incorporated? They're Jinder Mahal's side chicks. Mm. Sunil and Samar, I think are their names in the WWE. They won the inaugural tag team titles. Uh, they did not defend them in uh, the merger attempt by Jeff Jarrett and uh, Hobel Horsch Hressen by Heffy Herrett. Uh, because they already signed up the WWE contract at the time. Uh, so then they had a tournament. LAX won the tournament. Reno Scum never had the belts. They've never won gold in Impact. And I hope that's... To, to, uh, one day I hope that changes. But this was a good match. Mm. Uh, yeah. Went nearly 12 minutes. Solid back and forth. Reno Scum looks uh, impressive. Josh Alexander is so damn good in the ring, though. It's insane. He, he reminds me of that crop of 90s talents who were, you know, known, known for the work rate in an era where no one was known for the work rate, like your Benoit's, your Malenko's, your Guerrero's, your Saturn's, those kinds mm -hmm. of guys. That's what Alexander feels like to me. Because he actually has a bit of a subtle demeanor, which adds to his personality and his gimmick. You know, the walking weapon, I think is what it's yeah. being called. So, like, that works. So the, the quiet, somber nature of his attitude actually plays into his character. And having Ethan Page, who himself isn't the greatest in-ring worker comparatively, but to have his personality, who, which is one of the best in wrestling, contrast so well with Josh Alexander, it's impressive. And I, I dig it. And I appreciate them. And they're awesome. Yeah. 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 So any yeah. thoughts on this tag match before we move on? Um, yeah, I agree. The tag match was solid. Again, the there wasn't... There was no build-up to it. There was no uh, backstory to it. But that's fine. Sometimes you can have a title match just to have a title match, you know. That that's that brings into the more treating it more like a sport, where not every title match has to be has to also be a grudge match on top of that too. I agree. The only thing I would have done differently is at what was it? Uh, Starstruck mm -hmm. made the announcement that this was going to be a number one contender match. Yes, they may have. I don't remember. 
But, you know, assuming that's the case, then kudos. So then we go backstage. Alicia's walking around. Ace Austin's all banged up. He's like, I'm here for you, Alicia. Because I care about you. And Eddie's violent. <laughs> and Alicia's like, I know how to take care of myself. And you look cute in those rib tapes. And he's like, thank you. She walks away. And then, oh, he's not injured. Ah! Oh, no. Here's my only gripe. Yeah. And this is this is wrestling wise. Mm-hmm. Treat your show like it's a fucking show. If you know that Ace Austin's gonna have a moment where he razzes Eddie Edwards, then you should also have a moment where Alicia watches the show back and realizes that Eddie, uh, that Ace Austin is in fact a giant douchebag. Yes. That's all I'm saying. Don't give us these tongue-in-cheek little moments and then pretend that no one else sees them because it's fucking stupid. Yeah, I mean, especially, like, uh, a- like after her match with Havoc, where Ace Austin is running around very nimbly trying to escape from Eddie Edwards. Nimbly bimbly. Nimbly bimbly. <laughs> Speaking of nimbly bimbly, Jordan Grace meets up with Madison Rain in the locker room. Uh, they, they don't want their, uh, they don't want to be aligning with Rosemary. That's fair. Grace says mm-hmm. that she doesn't need any advice from Madison, and she doesn't need Rosemary. And she'll tell Rosemary that herself. Mm. To, uh, Jordan Grace, I will, I will, I will give you some advice. Uh, stop trying to promote this performance artist bullshit. You're pro wrestlers. If you don't like being called pro wrestlers, retire. Stop being a giant baby. She doesn't like being called a pro wrestler? She goes by her real name of Trisha Paytas or Pattis or Platus or Patters or Pat- Platypus. Okay. And uh, whenever anyone, anyone calls her Jordan Grace, she goes, who's that? Because she's really trying to be this method actress, but it's really not working well. Mm. And it's causing some dissension in the wrestling fandom. Like People are having an honest-to-God debate about whether or not we should call them performance artists or pro wrestlers. And I'm going to stick with pro wrestlers because you know what pro, uh, performance artists all have in common? What's that? They're broke. Because mm. <laughs> it turns out subjective art isn't something you can sell to the masses. Go fucking figure. Mm. And considering this is something you are trying to sell to the masses, you should not be trying to narrow your audience. I swear to God, new generation of wrestlers are fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Speaking of stupid, why does Jessica Havoc still have a job? I don't know, man. <laughs> So Alicia shows up. They brawl, 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 brawl. Then Eddie runs in and chases Ace Austin. And then he gets choke slammed by fucking Jessica Havoc. Because you got to have the men getting put down by the women's. Because PC culture is apparently a thing in Impact now. Yes, because she's the monster of the knockouts. And Eddie Edwards is still taller, taller than her. <laughs> and you can tell that it was all Eddie jumping on that choke slam. I'm not impressed. You can tell me yeah. I'm supposed to be, but here's the thing. Don't do things that you have to try to convince me on. Do things that I have to try to convince myself out of. Like if Taylor Cross were to show up and drop a cinder block on someone's head, I 75% believe that'll happen. <laughs> like yeah. if, if I ever hear that Kevin Cross, it, former Impact Wrestling star, because he'll be former if this ever does happen, has been arrested because he dropped a cinder block on someone's head while they were sleeping. I will not go. I am shocked, flim flammed, bamboozled, and shooked it. I will would say. Would you? Yes, go on. W- would you say that checks out? I would say, huh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> if you were to tell me that Alicia Edwards was a little tiny, little itty bitty thing and she lost to a big girl, okay, that checks out. Yeah. There's a reason why every other combat sport has weight divisions <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> to avoid this shit. Yes. <laughs> if you were to tell me that Jessica Havoc, who is about as athletic as Abyss on no knees, mm. was going to somehow take Eddie Edwards down, I'm calling you a liar. I don't like intergender wrestling. I don't like intergender combat. I think it's stupid when Henry Cejudo of the UFC tries to challenge women to, to dual championship belt title matches. And I think it's stupid when it happens in wrestling. Zach, I know you don't have any context for what I'm talking about, so, so I'll explain it to you. Henry Cejudo is in one of the lighter weight classes in the UFC. Yeah. I want to say he's a f- bantamweight, featherweight. These are classes that the UFC also have in women's divisions. The, they mm-hmm. don't have anything higher than a bantamweight, I think. They have, like, atomweight, strawweight, featherweight, 
something else. Maybe Bantam. Right. So Henry Cejudo's on the lower end of the weight spectrum for the men and on the higher weight spectrum of the women. And he's calling out whoever the women's champion is of his weight class. And everyone's like, oh, Henry Cejudo, you're so cool. And I'm like, why? If Henry Cejudo fought a woman in his weight class, he'd kill her. Wouldn't even be a competition. Why, why does anyone want to see this? So I don't like it in MMA. I don't like it in boxing. I don't like it in real life. And I damn sure don't like it in my wrestling. Hashtag make my wrestling great again. <laughs> and yes, I can use that axiom. Because when you're putting a, a dumb motherfucker by the name of Super Holman. You haven't even seen this guy, Zach. Let me tell you who this fuck, this motherfucker is. He, he's this... He, he sounds like he's got not just a, a mental impediment, but a speech impediment as well. And he, he's become kind of famous in the wrestling community. Because mm-hmm. he's a juggalo. And he starts off all his videos with, To all my juggalos and juggalettes. My name is Superhuman and I'm going to do something stupid. And then he listens to that stupid thing. And it's like jumping on a, a microwave or jumping on a barbed wire board or jumping on light tubes. So he's basically being a backyard wrestler from 15 years ago. Yep. But he calls himself mm. a stuntman. And, and and before he does every jump, he he swings his arm like like he's the Rock, and he goes fuck that shit, and then he does an elbow drop. And he's now booked on a main event of a wrestling show with Joey Ryan. Of course he is, because performance artists are ruining wrestling. You know how they say wrestling can can have everything. Yeah. No, it fucking cannot. Sit your asses down. You're not eligible to play anymore. You have lost the right to go on this field trip. Your grades aren't good enough. You're sitting out in the hallway. You don't get to watch the live-action remake of Pinocchio. That one may have been a bit personal. <laughs> you, do, uh, you, you, you got left Fourth out grade. watching that? <laughs> I did not turn in something that I was supposed to turn in because, well, let's just say that. A reoccurring trend with my mother. And because of such, I could not watch the movie, and I was the only one who wasn't allowed. So I had to sit out in the hallway for two hours while these motherfuckers ate popcorn pizza and watched Jonathan Taylor Thomas and all of his JTT-ness reenact the scenes of Pinocchio. Mm. I've never watched that movie since. I apologize. To be fair, I haven't even thought about that moment until just now. (laughs) In fact, I kind of forgot that Jonathan Taylor Thomas did a remake of uh, Pinocchio. But there you go. But there you go. There you go. Are 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 you clacking, clinkling? What's that sort of sounding shit? Uh, My my phone just made a noise for some reason, which is stupid because it's supposed to be on silent. Well, silent, but violent. So... Uh, yeah, uh, Ace arrives, Alicia, blah, blah, blah. We then get another Sue Young wacky, uh, video package where she speaks backwards gibberish. So wacky. Wacky tacky. Wacky tabacky. Well, then we get Sammy blaming David Christ for their loss last week. This was a yeah. fucking hilarious ass segment, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what Dave said, but Dave had the greatest excuse in the world. <laughs> These guys are hilarious. I love them. I, I love. <laughs> they, they shouldn't be funny, which makes them even more funny. <laughs> so, by the by, they did a uh, Fight Network post a video on YouTube, um, mm. kind of showing um, kind of the the situation with Eddie Edwards with the bat incident from last year. Yeah, talking about how it was an opportunity that fell into his lap to reinvent himself, so he took it. Is that what we're calling it now? I wanted to point out that it was an opportunity that hit him in the face. Like a bat. Yes. Because it was a bat that hit him in the face. The the, the broke his fucking face. It checks out, guys. It checks out. Checks out. (laughs) Then we got Moose talking with some ladies. Calling out Ken Shamrock. Calling out Shamrock. The Shamrockarama. I don't know what the end game of this is. Shamrock mm-hmm. will be in Las Vegas. I 
can't wait. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be awesome or terrible, but I can tell you this much. I'm excited. <laughs> I've been wanting Ken Shamrock to return to Impact since I thought he was too old at the age of 44. <laughs> and how old is he now? 55. Mm. Wrestling is weird, man. Yeah. Because the more we see advances in, you know, taking care of your bodies and dieting and exercising, the less we're hung up on age. Mm-hmm. I remember when MVP debuted for SmackDown. I'm like, he's 34. He can't carry a brand. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a little wrong. Well, I mean, I wasn't wrong. He couldn't carry a brand, which is why No, he did. but it had nothing to do with his age. No, and I was wrong about that. Now, I'm not saying Ken Shamrock should carry the fucking world title. <laughs> <laughs> but I've pitched before Ken Shamrock having a few matches with Impact and managing Eddie Edwards. Mm. We might finally be getting that. Because Ken Shamrock is starting his own bare knuckle boxing promotion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which means the synergy would be perfect. So we'll see what happens. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, Moose calls him out, and we'll see what happens with that. Uh, next up, we have an X Division Championship match. It's Rich Swanorama. Swanee? Versus the Golden Draw. The gold, the Silver Gold Draw. The White Gold Draw. My bad. The White Gold Draw. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this was a follow up match to the uh, night Jake actually won the belt a couple weeks ago at one of those events that we talk about all the time. So on un star breakable struck. Yes. Star strikeable spake bound bound glory struck to my adversary. Yeah. Number two. <laughs> <laughs> the reckoning. Eggs over my hammy. <laughs> <laughs> From Melbourne. Brought to you by Skittles. They're juicy, juicy, fun, fun, fun. So, what do you think of the uh, the rematch? Um, excellent rematch, excellent mm -hmm, rematch. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I like I like that Jake Jake Chris uh, retained the title. Yeah. because uh, it's if they transformed him into this golden draw and then drop the have him drop the belt on his first. Or is it his second defense? Either way, it would it would have felt like a waste, and it's it's working for him. Mm -hmm. I, I like he's he's definitely he's got more confidence. He's he's got a little more of a swagger to him. He's his uh, his uh, character work is has improved since doing this. I I am digging it. So let's just pretend. That Tessa doesn't face Brian Cage and Sammy for the world title. That'd be Let's okay. pretend that that won't happen and she won't end up winning. Do you put Tessa against Jake Chris for the exhibition title? Hmm. I mean, I I would take that honestly because the match wouldn't be bad and. It would be more, at least somewhat more believable than Tessa facing Brian Cage. The dude is so wide, he literally is the ring with. Yes, yes. Also, by the way, um, before Wrestle Circus went out of business, um, they actually did that. Yes, they Tessa did. Tessa versus Cage. <laughs> and the match was good. I like that you're pulling out random references to, to indie wrestling. Yes, I've seen a handful of Russell Cage, uh, Russell Circus matches. Hmm. Um, one, the the most notable one, in my opinion, was Orange um, Cassidy versus Jarvis Cotton Belly. No. Cunt. No. <laughs> Uh, to me, it was um, Tessa Blanchard versus Rachel Ellering. Oh, solid match. It was very good. It was very good. I don't know if Rachel Ellering was ever close to being signed by Impact, but 
that's the kind of chick that they should have gone after. Mm-hmm. She's super, super fucking good. <clears throat> so then we get the same Tanel Dashwood promo we got on Twitter a couple weeks back. It's all about her. Ooh, so yay! Much wow, so good. So good. So wow, much good. The 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 bestest. Then we get the Deaners. Desi Hit Squad show up to do work. De- Deaners roll up drunk in their little two by four, four by four. One of those is right. And one of those is Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Ho! Oh! oh. <laughs> Uh, we get a highlight package uh, about Impact emanating from Mexico next week. Then we get the Impact Mo- Plus moment of the week, which is Ken Shamrock smiles for the uh, NW World title. Yeah, Ken Shamrock, yeah! Yeah, woo! Taya announces that she will be the official longest reigning knockout champion ever by next week. I don't as know if that's actually she, true. I believe it's as long as she wins her title defense. Ah, but... okay. She did. Yay! Yay. Who had the previous uh, record? Taryn Terrell? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think that's right. Or Brooke Tessmacher? Hmm. They're also my two fantasies. So, like, you know, thumbs up. Thumbs up. (laughs) Thumbs up. All right. um, Then we got Willie Mack versus Trey. Apparently, Trey is unhappy with PWG at the moment. Really? Trey tweeted out uh, that he is not happy that he had to wait three weeks for a quote-unquote top-level indie to finally pay him. Now, some people will think that that means Impact. One, Impact's not an indie. And two, Impact has the same financial payment plan that they've had for years at this point, where they pay you for the show that you uh, worked on when it airs. For clarification. Mm -hmm. Now, Trey said three weeks top-level indie. There was a show about three weeks ago that Trey worked on. It was PWG. That's the toppest, tip, tippiest of the toppest promotions. So Trey's unhappy with the uh, the folks at, at PWG, I'm assuming. I'm inferring. He has since tw- uh, deleted the tweet, which makes sense, because why would Trey want to ruin a opportunity to make money? But I saw it, Trey. I saw it. But I love you, dude. You're awesome. He's taking on Willie Mack. This is going to be a, a wackadoodle match. There were some speed moves, some rana moves, a cannonball, cutter, punches, kicks, slaps, knees, 619s, and pretty sure 69. Yeah. Mack catches Trey with a stunner, though. Mm-hmm. After he tried to uh, hit him with a Meteora, and Mac gets the win at uh, about five and a half minutes, which is a little short for these two guys. Yes, I would have enjoyed seeing longer. Yes, they are fantastic. Yes, uh, we need more Willie Mac. Need more Mac. Need more Trey, more Rascals, mm-hmm. and more Rob Van Dam watching the Rascals. Yes, and doing nothing else. He can tag with the Rascals. Okay. And tag against the Rascals, especially if, yes. if, if Dez wants to be kicked again. <laughs> Dez, Dez is too innocent for this world. <laughs> <laughs> then in the main event of the evening. Oh, <gasps> the main event. Sam McCallan takes on Tom Dreamer. No DQ. They brawl. They ramble. They shoot. They sh- they jive. They they crunk. They I don't. I have no. I have nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> they twerk. Ooh. They rabble, 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 rabble. and Nazar, and you know turtles. So eventually, Sammy gets the win, thanks to the um, what does he call it? The the package, not the package pile driver. The the the, the uh, cactus special. The cactus special. It's the cactus special on uh, old Tommy Boy. Instead of getting the wingies that Tommy Boy wanted, he got a power driver. Mm-hmm. One, two, three, called night. Tessa Blanchard's like, hey, what's up, Sammy? And he's like, oh, hey, what's up? Oh, god damn it. And then Tessa attacks Sammy. Woo! Jake comes out, though. Or he's already out, I forget. And he helps clear the ring. And Sammy and Jake, uh, they're standing. Yep. Woo! 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 Yeah! Woo! Yeah! 
Yeah. <laughs> what do we think of this week's impact? Um, you know, all in all, a pretty solid show. Um, it had some pretty solid matches pretty much all all throughout the show, you know, barring a, a Jessica Havoc. But, you know, Jessica Havoc is Jessica Havoc. And Alicia, well, I like Alicia. She, she's still not that great in the ring. So, but had, had a solid tag team title match. Um, great X Division title match. Um, opening match, even though it ended a double count out, still enjoyable to watch. 